Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Wednesday here on chronospeakeasy.com. I'm Paul, joined with Angela. Hi. And Domino. <laughs> and we just decided to revisit Justice League. Yeah. So Justice League Revisited, I think is what we're going to call this episode. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's on HBO, and we thought, oh, you know, what the heck, let's, let's, let's watch it again and see. Um, because we couldn't do Superman versus Batman again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm just going to come off the bat, or straight off the bat, whatever. I'm just thinking of Batman. Um, I liked this movie so much more than when we saw it in theaters. I mean, I I agree. I wouldn't say I liked it so much more, but I definitely um, appreciated it. It was funny because when when you started playing the movie, because it was between this and Tomb Raider of what to watch, and um, we like flipped a coin, basically. And right in the first, like... I want to say 30 seconds, I was really regretting the decision to watch it because I just started remembering Mm -hmm. those scenes between um, Lois and Clark that I was like, I don't want to do this again. But, you know, I'm glad we stuck to it Um, because I think it... Yeah, it deserved another look. Well, I think, you know, what sort of immediately, immediately kind of had me second-guessing watching this was the cell phone footage opening, yeah. the mustache gate. Yeah. I mean, it just... It's so bad. It's really like, weird. It's so bad, and it's so weird, and it's like, it's so unnecessary, and I mean, yeah, I mean, because even the dialogue in that sequence, it just felt... So just goofy. Yeah, it's, it felt goofy. It felt like, you know, if these kids got to, ran up to Superman and were asking him anything, mm-hmm. and then they're like quieting each other, it's like the, the questions that they were asking just didn't seem like boys would ask. It was just, it was very odd and forced, and like, it didn't seem like something any little kid was like. I mean the 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 closest was uh can you like can you fight a hippo or whatever that seemed closer to something you know it just yeah. it just it seems so weird in his fucking face Yeah Oh my god it was so bad. It's like it's like puffy Yeah and his lips it were like It was like it was like it was like he got stung by a bumblebee or like or like a like a bee well, and had a reaction it, it, I felt like somebody had put the smudge button um, from uh, Photoshop around his mouth, (laughs) and he was just talking like into it. It was so weird, and it just looked so bad, and it threw me off. Like, and it had me immediately regretting watching this movie again. To some of the dialogue with, oh, you know, the yes, it's like a like a river, or about hope. You know, it's like losing your car keys. They're they're close by. And if you dig hard enough, you'll find it or something. Like what? It, 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 it was it was like they were, I mean, I know they were trying to be really profound in the whole opening sequence with like Superman being gone. And I felt it. I felt it a little bit, but um, it just felt so forced that it threw me out of like, I, I felt like. You know, they were they were so heavy handed that they were like, feel this way, feel this way and like shaking me. And it's like, I can't. Why are you fucking shaking me? You know what I thought? I was trying to think about what losing Superman would be like, you know, because I always try to like think about like, you know, because every movie I see, I want the world to feel real, you know. And for me, I felt like losing Superman is probably what I think what they were trying to convey was like losing JFK. Yeah, and, and and that and I I see that I saw and, and don't get me wrong because that that actual sequence was really well done, mm-hmm. and I think I would have been a little more receptive to it if it hadn't been for that cell phone footage cold yeah. open, and but that sequence um, was beautifully done. I mean, and and especially when you see like the skinhead attacking the Muslim family, right? And, yeah, and these were things that I could like really you know connect with. It was just, you know, you know what it kind of makes me think of. Um, here's a good analogy for it. So, 
you know when you read something by an amazing writer, mm-hmm. like Truman Capote, like you you pick up in cold blood and you start reading and then you're like, oh my God, this is like so beautifully written. And then you realize you're paying more attention to the word structure and the writing than you are of the actual story. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what it was like. I mean, it was, I mean, the sequence was beautifully done, but I was thinking about like what they were doing and what they were trying to do. And it just like, pulled me yeah. from the scene. It pulled me from the moment. It pulled me because I was like, you guys are really, really trying to make me feel a certain way. I don't like it. Let me feel how I want to feel. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't, for me, it didn't feel like it was heavy handed. I think like for me, like I really liked the black Superman logo in different parts of the world. Like it wasn't like people like rolling around in the streets crying the way like people did in North Korea. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they lost yeah. their lead. Like, if you're not crying, you don't yeah. love it. I, like, I think I think just seeing the different locations with the banner, I thought was nice. Because, it, like I said, it was... It was Here, so, like, you see, like the, like, the homeless man with the dog. Oh, I tried. You yeah, know, that was... Okay, they, I agree. If they had that just had handed. the image of the homeless man with the dog, just, like, while, but, while there's, like, a, a prep student running by him, just, like, a quick thing, there you go. Message sent. But with the close-up of the sign, I tried. It's like, no. You know what I think the other thing kind of bugged me, too, though, about that was um, I feel like all of these things would have been happening with or without Superman. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like, like, skinheads rising up isn't the result of Superman's death. Well, and they didn't do the work, I feel like, you know, because you you had said um, while we were watching it, you know, you're like, you know. Like, weren't they just like distrustful and hating him? Like, right. why? Yeah. Why is the why is the world reacting like this? Right. And you didn't really see the world reacting. You saw, like, Metropolis reacting. Right. You. Did, I mean, you saw like a banner at like in like on on like London Bridge. Yeah. Or like in Dubai or wherever they were. They and you saw the banners, but you didn't actually see the people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where a lot of these movies, these DC films have been failing is that, you know, and it's been the running commentary whenever we're shit talking a DC movie is that we're completely left without like how actual people are reacting to things like mm-hmm. you know when when what well, not return of superman but the other one batman versus superman no 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 it no. wasn't man of steel man of steel when he like those there's they decimate that fight scene like decimated like so many buildings <coughs> and you know there were people in those buildings who were like dying so many people died the death toll in that movie was so huge and nothing yeah we had nothing like unlike the DC or the Marvel movies where you get a sense, you know, like when the the battle in New York and Avengers, you know, you're seeing everything from the ground level. You're mm-hmm. seeing it where they're on the on the on the ground with people running around them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like yeah. you're seeing people in cafes, people running with children, people like actual waitresses Mm -hmm. like you know you're seeing workers normal people reacting to all the fucking crazy shit going on all those people that were like in grand central station like you're seeing it and it felt so visceral but then with this you're just kind of like okay see i always well one thing i'll say is that it's very structured and like a obvious well you know and i kind of don't mind the structure like i like if if i were to if somebody were to pitch me these movies like to say that you know the world finds out about superman and so closely after that or simultaneously that we're not alone and, and this huge destructive thing happens where you know you're you're you know while you can appreciate superman you have to question him because he's associated with that cataclysmic event um you know so i sort of kind of like the idea of people being like i'm not sure we don't know enough about him yeah and then you know and i think then having like i kind of like that these movies are kind of feeling the consequences of man of steel okay you know like i like i I, because it's world building for better for worse 
whether it's poor world building or bad world building. But if someone explains to me like that, I, I you know, w- if I hadn't seen the movies, I'd be like, interesting. Okay, I'd like to see yeah. how that's. Let me ask you a question. Like, do you think that because these characters um, for DC are so much more iconic? Like, because with Avengers, you know, you mm-hmm. had, like, these kind of, I mean... No it, one knew who Iron Man nobody, was. Nobody, nobody, you know, yeah. nobody, but when Iron Man came out, nobody knew who the fuck he was and why mm-hmm. they should care. And, you know, so you have the Avengers, and you have, like, Black Widow and, like, Hawkeye. Like, mm-hmm. these are very B-list yeah. characters. So do you think that because they were B-list characters, it was actually easier to write them and write for them because they were, they, they didn't... There wasn't such a weight behind it. Do you think that the the, the level of of that the that that Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman are on? Do you think that made it more difficult to work with? Do you think people put too much, maybe too much stress on themselves, or didn't or try or maybe on the other hand, did they phone it in because they were like, oh, well, everybody's gonna like it? No, I think that it wasn't so much. It's not, I would say, the stress of the responsibility of writing characters like this or writing icons. I think it's not having room for the characters to breathe. Okay. I think that's where it suffers. Like, okay. for me, I think Justice League was too soon. I think Batman versus Superman was too soon. You know, like, I would have liked to have seen more Superman movies or at least another Superman movie where he's fleshed out. Yeah, he's fleshed out because. You know, I get, and again, going back to what I was saying earlier, if someone presented me a timeline, like, this is the DC movies we want to make. We want to make, you know, this is what happens in Man of Steel, and then this is what happens with, you know, Batman and Superman. You know, I would be like, I get it with the assumption of that there is more emotional weight. It's like, you know, I think one of the reasons why, and, you know, I, I don't want to compare it, but it seems impossible not to, you look at Captain America Civil War. Part of the reason why, for me, that has such an emotional impact was because we had had movies of Iron Man, movies of Captain America, and we had movies of, you know, ba- um, sorry, Captain America and Iron Man together. So when they're fighting each other, you feel it. Like, like I didn't feel anything when Superman died. And I wanted to. I didn't you know either. Because I wanted, I kind of wanted to feel the way I did when I read the comic book. Yeah, we remember when everybody had like the black armbands and shit. Yeah, like, like I, like I think, I think that's where I, I think the film kind of, or at least the films kind of suffer is like we didn't get to know Superman, and that's why like we couldn't really mourn him. Yeah, and and because Superman, I mean, he he had so many. Um, versions and obviously Christopher Reeves being the best. Right. Um and, and I'm gonna be honest, I like Henry Cavill or Cal I still don't know how you say his name. Like I think first of all, and I know this is very shallow, he looks like a Superman. He does. You know, and I think that, you know, you brought up a good point earlier about, you know, maybe being a good Superman, not being a good Clark. I think that's where it kind of falls back on how he he's written and directed. I don't know, though. So this is actually going into... I, I can really dive into my notes on this if we're talking Sorry if about, I'm jumping ahead a few No, cases. not at all. I mean, we can we can just run around on this. Um, so one of the things that I had um, was... Uh, I, was I, I wrote down, like, the performances in this movie mm-hmm. that I adored. And I'm not talking, like... It wasn't, like, it just, like... A, because, like, I was sitting in, like, a pile of trash that I see, like, a ripe fruit that I'm like, <laughs> oh, look, you know? Right. No, these were actually really, really great casting choices, and these were amazing performances because because I, I had to, like, despite the dialogue, mm-hmm. they were able to flip it, and I'm talking about Jeremy Irons, Ezra Miller, and Billy Crudup. Like, they were amazing. Like, Jeremy Irons being... Um, Sassy Alfred. Sassy Alfred. Um, oh my God, he had lines that if like I feel like if anybody else had these lines, it would have fallen completely flat. He, but he did it in such a way. Well, he made that exploding penguin line work. Oh, like so I, I well. missed the days when the biggest thing they had to worry about was exploding penguins. You know, and I thought that was like shit. He really fucking sold that. He he sold all of it. Yeah, and like you know, even with so you have this moment where um you know the flashes with his dad. This is Ezra Miller and Billy Kudrup, and they're like in like the the prison and there is a moment where they touch hands in the glass and this should have been cheesy the cheesiest fucking thing in the movie and they sold it 
so well. Right. They sold it so well. I mean, they were even like everything. I, I feel that uh, Ezra, like as the Flash, was complete. I, I just I thought he was so amazing. I think he was my favorite part of the entire movie. I said that when we first mm-hmm. talked about it. I loved him. I loved how he played the characters kind of on the spectrum. Well, and I also like that he's wide eyed and bushy tailed. Yeah, and and, and we, there there's been no character like that in any of the DC films no. so far. Like doesn't take himself seriously. N- not at all. And it's just so refreshing. But he didn't. He he was just so he was so just fun. Yeah. With it, and he was—he's actually. I mean, if you get a chance to see his other movies, if our, our listeners are hearing us, he is a powerhouse. And oh, phenomenal! I mean, perks of being a wallflower. Uh, we need to talk about Kevin. We, him, him. We need to talk about Kevin. Oh my God, his. his he is so delightfully creepy. It's in haunting. Movie. Yeah, like I, I still think uh, I, that's why when I when we first saw um, Tilda Swinton walking in on him masturbating. Oh my god! Like him, <laughs> it's like <laughs> no. He is so. I mean, when he, they casted him as this, I was nervous, not because I didn't think he could do it. I thought, oh, I think he's going to be amazing, but I was nervous that I wouldn't be able to forget. His performance, and we need to talk about Kevin. Yeah, and you totally <laughs> so, do. Like, you totally you do. do. You do. He's amazing. And then, and then it, it sucked because then you had somebody like Amy Adams, who I, I adore love. Her. Amy Adams, I fucking adore her. I will just, I just, I just like to watch her. I love her face. I love everything about her. And I, I thought like, oh, this, mo-, like you know, they wasted her. They completely wasted her talent. See, but then she but i looked at like you know somebody i know jeremy irons clearly has more um like uh longevity than she does she, he's been in the business for a resume. while yeah he has a bit more of a resume and he's you know definitely on a i, I think a more established actor than she is but i mean she the, the the dialogue was just so bad it's like was it impossible i don't know i don't know i'm not a fucking filmmaker or a professional critic i have no idea right well that's so. where i think you know so it's a, so when I talk about like Superman and like Henry Cavill, I honestly I think he phoned this in. I think he phoned this in completely. And with him like leaving leaving the projects altogether, he did that right recently. I think so. I still don't know what's up with I that. Know. I don't know if he's in or out. If he's in or out, but it's like I feel like he his heart clearly isn't in it. And and I was and he. Well, the other thing too you have to think about is that. You know, he was doing these reshoots while doing Mission Impossible. It's like, I, I almost kind of feel like I can't blame him for phoning it in. Be, for, I mean, because you don't know what the scheduling was like. Or, like, mm. you know, I mean, I mean, can you imagine, like, you know, like being in Europe? Like, oh, I, I had to fly back to L.A. and shit this Man of Steel shit. Then I got to fly back and finish Mission Impossible. Yeah, and if you your know, heart, I mean, but it didn't, it really didn't seem like his heart was in it at all. And I, and I wouldn't blame him. But, I mean, because the, here's the thing. You get these little snippets of these interactions and stuff, like I want, I want more sassy Alfred Jeremy Irons. Right. I would take another movie with him, and even um, uh, Ben. Uh, I almost said Ben Stiller. What the <laughs> fuck? Ben Affleck. Sorry, ben Affleck. And I, like, say, I would take another Ben Affleck as Batman because I don't like Ben Affleck as Batman. Really? I don't. I, I, I you know what? I think I, maybe my expectations were so low. I just, I don't like him. Oh, I, I do. Don't, I, I don't I like actually, him at see, all. I think that's one of the worst. I think that he does Batman and Bruce real well. I don't. I don't like him. I thought that he was good. I, I thought that he did a good, like, Bruce, but I just, I just don't like him. But I would take, I would gobble up. A movie with him for Jeremy Irons, like because I wanted more of that. And then, like you know, you had um, I wanted I, I would totally take a Flash movie. I would totally take a, a Cyborg movie, like his, his that interaction with him and his dad. It's like I I wanted these things. I wanted these moments. And then the characters that they gave. I think so much screen time to um, like Superman was put on a high pedestal for this movie, but nothing like clicked at all. Um, he got a lot of airtime him for his like reflection about being alive again. Mm. It didn't really serve much of a purpose in the movie, and him and AD, Amy Adams like had all of this time oh, and like so weird. and these and and it was just it was so fucking weird. You all of good. it, all of it. Like he just what? came back from the dead out of like Kryptonian and she's like, poop water. I failed you. I wasn't a good enough yeah. reporter. It's like what are you talking about? And, and the, we know what I didn't like about that either. <laughs> she cuts him off. She asks him a question. He goes to Andrew's like like and like, then she's like I wasn't strong enough. 
I'm going to talk about me. Yeah, it's like, stop. I'm going to talk about me. Stop. I know you, like, died and came back, but I need to talk about me. And it's like, you guys, this is... The, the, yeah, I, I just... I, all of it, I, I couldn't... I just couldn't do it. And I think a lot of it had to do with um, him not being able to do Clark. Because I don't... I just... I, he... Well, see, this, see, this is where I think it goes back to Clark being written. Because a, a lot of that just, just like... Well, I mean, also, look at him. And, like, he... I mean, I loved, like... You, I hate, like, comparing, like, performances, especially with Christopher Reeves, because, like, I mean, he... Oh it almost God. seems like it's not fair to him. It isn't kind of fair. Way. It isn't fair. But, like, I mean, give him, like, a suit that doesn't... Like, a, 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 like work clothes that just are... Just don't fit. Like, not, like, super tight to show off his physique. No, yeah. I want to see him kind of swimming in Clark weird Clark Kent is awkward. awkward. Yeah, awkward. He And that's what's so charming about Clark yeah. Kent. Is that, apart from him being kind of, like, this beautiful man... Because even as Clark Kent, like, he's a very good-looking man. Yeah. But I think what I was like to... What my interpretation of Clark Kent is that he doesn't know that. Mm, exactly. Like, he's the last person to figure that out. Right. That's why he's so awkward. He was clueless. He was bumbling. He was, I mean, he he was so earnest, and he tried really hard, and like, and you just, you couldn't help but feel for him. He's, Clark Kent's supposed to be kind of a unicorn, I think. He is. He he's, is a, he's beautiful and doesn't know it. Yeah. Yeah. And which is, and, which is totally okay, but he had a personality, and that came through in Superman, so, I mean, you, so with Superman being this like otherworldly ethereal figure, I mean, I think that Henry Cavill did that so well, but like, it's like, where is the humanity? Yeah. You know, and this is where I feel like it, this, I think, I don't know, the mom, the Ma Ken Lois Lane stuff felt forced. I kind of wish they hadn't killed Jimmy Olsen. In Batman yeah. vs Superman, because this is where I would have liked to have seen a scene where Jimmy mourning a, like the loss of Clark. Yeah, you know somebody who didn't know, didn't know, and didn't want to fuck him. You know, I think if yeah. you had if you had a, if you had a platonic, <laughs> you know, Jimmy Olsen it wasn't his mom. Like it's just it, it was right. Weird. He wasn't his mom. Wasn't like a gal pal. Just like like because because you know I always like the dynamic of Jimmy Olsen and Clark Kent kind of being like brothers in a way yeah you know and i think i would have liked to have seen that i i would have liked to have seen like i i don't know i mean i get that ma can't supposed to be like the loss of like the son and lois is the loss of the lover but sometimes i, I think i would like to have seen maybe jimmy and lois the loss of a friend yeah morning clark like a co-worker and like a colleague and like a big brother yeah you know like i i would have liked to have seen that dynamic absolutely because I think it's important for Clark to have somebody, you know, and, and you know the the, the Orson and Jimmy Olsen. I'll go into this real quick. You know, he was not, he didn't he uh, his origin isn't isn't in the comics. He was the radio show because they needed Superman yeah, to, to have, have somebody the, to talk to. Yeah, and I think I would have liked to have had like oh gee, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I would have liked to have seen Clark have a confidant. Like, kind of before the Lois Lane relationship kicks in. Yeah. You know, that kind of Clark has, like, a buddy. Yeah. You know. Because at the end of the day, I mean, yes, he is from Krypton. He is this otherworldly figure. But he was raised on Earth. And that's something, you know, I know I was kind of bashing the writing a little bit. But there is a line in here that I liked. And I think he's, I can't remember if he's talking to, I think he's talking to Alfred. Where, you know, he's just coming back from everybody kind of poo-pooing the idea of resurrecting Superman. And I like that Bruce Wayne says he was more human than I am. Yeah. You know, like, he he had a job, and he had a girlfriend, and he was doing all and, these things that I never did. Yeah, and I think, and no, and I agree, and, and that's, the, but that's the Superman that we know that wasn't shown in any way. Yeah. In this film, or I think in the previous movies. Right. I don't think we felt that at all, and I think that was the big, um... The big letdown yeah. with his with his films because we did yeah we didn't get we didn't get Clark right we didn't get that personality there was a little moment I think after the big fight um, where and they they pulled the cubes apart where he's like laying on the ground because he he's like oh I like being alive you know and then he's like he's like never mind <laughs> I want to be dead like as it was like a throw off joke and it's like if they had just taken like a moment like that yeah and just given that like. That that's the personality, you know. That was his own the only moment of personality in the whole movie well, where you're like, oh, okay, so he's got kind of a 
a twisted sense of humor. Okay, like, I'll yeah. take it. I didn't feel, I, I just, yeah. I also kind of wish. nothing there, just nothing. I think, yeah, I mean, and that's been true, and I think that, that you know, and that's sort of why, like, I kind of didn't care that he died or didn't care that he, that he came back, because we didn't have that in this movie, Batman vs. Superman, or Man of Steel. Nope. Like, I would have liked to have seen, like, when, so going back to Man of Steel, when Clark steps out of the ship in the Superman gear for the first time, and he's having some struggle trying to fly, like, I had wished there was more of that. Mm. Because one of the best things about Iron Man, and Iron Man took this from Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man movie, was the learning curve. Mm. Yeah. You know, like, just kind of awkward, bumbling, like, you know, figuring it out. And I get that, like, this is supposed to be a natural ability for Superman, but... But walking's a natural ability, and we didn't come out of the womb walking. Yeah, we still fuck it up. I'm like, like yeah. I'm 33, and I'm still messing with that. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like, like, I feel like, I, I kind of wish I saw... I mean, shit, mm, just coming to, to sit down to do this podcast, I'm a little over the weather, I was stumbling my ass in here. Like, it's just, it's not something, it's like, kind of a, you have to keep doing it. Right. Um, so that's something I kind of wish I'd seen more of with Superman. But I will say, you know, I really liked... Um, Batman and Gotham. Mm. Like, I like how Gotham felt, like, fictional, but, like, real. Like, it almost kind of felt like a fantasy. Yeah. Which is how I always, like, I mean, I like... You you even referenced the um, the, uh, original kind of set design when you were talking about, like, Tim Burton. You had, it kind of had, like, a hint and a feel of that, because it is, it is otherworldly. Yeah, for me, it was, like, the perfect marriage of, say, Tim Burton's Batman Returns and Chris Nolan's Gotham City. Yeah. Because Gotham City is, like, so the Chris Nolan, I mean, that's, oh, God, they filmed it in Chicago. Yeah. So, I mean, it, like, there's, um... So there's no set design. They just kind of took a city that was already existing, which is fine. Well, which in Chicago is great because it does have that kind of noir feeling to right. it. Right. But which but, is really, I think, right. a big theme for Batman. But when you look at the Chris Nolan Batman set, I don't buy there being like a Mr. Freeze or a Killer Croc. Oh yeah. With this Gotham City, it's more believable yeah, that oh, Mr. Yeah. Freeze could exist there in Clayface and oh, yeah. you know, a croc and you know kind of all of the Two weird... Face definitely hung out yeah, there. You know? Yeah, it felt like more fantastical. And going back to that though, I thought it was really cool. Um I loved it when he catches the the his criminal and then all of that just go sideways when the weird bug thing shows up and it's like the right, criminal's the, looking the at it like just like what the shit, you know? And and I loved that because that is so true. I think for people in this in our country, I can only speak as American, but like, man, do we drop our differences when there's like an outside like kind of threat? We're just like, wait, what? You know? Yeah. Like, and it's like, holy shit! Now we're on the same team because we're both trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And it's and I loved that they had that moment. Well, and I also liked you know the way the actor kind of just like. He was all tied up, and he sort of just kind of jumps into frame. frame. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. Um, it was nice. And they, and even, even he had a commentary on like, oh, it's they must be coming back because Superman's gone. Like he's like trying to figure it out too. It's like, and it's like they, it's like he completely forgot about this fight they were having. And I, and I, I really liked that. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and I, um, I'm actually trying to find that actor's name because he was in that Netflix series about the uh, the two FBI agents mm-hmm. who were kind of developing the profiling. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, my my Manhunter, Mindhunter, yeah, Mindhunter. Yeah. yeah. So um, because he's also in um, he's also in Fight Club. You know, where, yeah. Like, um, that's right. He's the one that he he's the one that figures out that like oh like in death. Like you do have a name. Like yep. his name was Robert Paulson. Like yeah. I like so I like that actor. Um oh here we go. Holt uh McCallany? Yeah, he was he, yeah, they they he, actually had some amazing like casting choices with like supporting characters and stuff that were just oh, they're fucking awesome. I am yeah. and I, and I, it just sucks that that this kind of well, you know what? Fell I, flat. What I also liked about his performance, it was sort of like you know, this is a Batman who's been around for twenty years, so it was sort of like he kind of knew. There's something about his performance where he knew that like there's a chance you could get, get caught by Batman, you know, oh, and yeah. I kind of like how sort of it's just it's sort of casual in a way, which it I, is, I did it's like. It's almost like kind of getting your stripes as a criminal, right? You know? Yeah. Getting, yeah. No, that's true. That's a good way of looking at it. Um, 
and you know, and I liked, you know, I kind of liked some of the, you know, clearly this is supposed to be building up for not just a Justice League sequel, but individual films. Yeah, you know, but I, I like. I kind of wish they did it the other way though, built up to a yeah, Justice League. Movie, but it did but make it does make me want to see Superman. I mean, I'm sorry, The Flash. Uh, it makes me really want to see Aquaman. I yeah, I do too. And um, I was gonna say, you know, I liked um, Jason Momoa. I liked. I hated. I still stand by this. I hated that he went. Yahoo! In the movie. I like the other noises he was making, like, oh, rad. You know, like, I kind of like... You know, but I I, I felt... I mean, compared to, woohoo! Like, you know... that was... Oh, God, I hated that. But... I mean, there was that moment where he's drink, drinking the fucking scotch or whatever out to, of the, to the out white the stripes. Yeah, like walking. I was like, yeah. Like, I just, I mean, just film, like, seriously, like an hour and a half of that, and I'll watch it. I think Me and the rest of America. Yeah, no, I mean, totally. Just back and walking. He could just be walking back and forth in a dock, just drinking a whole bottle. Like, just filming in real time. Yeah. And there you go. Big you splashing <laughs> waves, and he's yeah. all wet. He's just wet, and just, like, just playing, just just play, like, a whole White Stripes album, like, Yeah. <laughs> I like that this is an Aquaman who is, like, kind of, he. I kind of feel like he's sort of given up. And when I say given up, I mean, he's like, you know what, like... Uh. Like I'm an out, I'm an uh, uh, I'm an oddball on land. I'm an oddball in water. Like fuck it, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna be me. Yeah, I'm just yeah. gonna do my thing, and I and I did like that. So I think the second watch, I was I yeah I, I think the second time around I, I was way less like of a bitch about it. <laughs> no, because I mean the whole Amy Adams and Clark stupidity really overshadowed the whole movie. For me. Yeah. All of that. The whole, you smell nice. I mean, honestly. It just, it oversold the whole, it just overshadowed everything. It and I actually wrote in my notes during that sequence, the whole third act is garbage. It's not garbage, but that's what I just like yeah. wrote it off. Literally well, you wrote know, it off. I mean, the things I didn't like about this movie had Lois Lane in it. Yeah. Because otherwise, because I liked the team dynamic, you know, like I, um, yeah, I, I liked everything so much more, except for Lois Lane. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of digging the CGI more. I'm digging Cyborg yeah. more. Um, I love Gal Gadot more, somehow. You know? I didn't think it was possible, I'm but grateful. she's so great. I I'm loved the, the, um, the uh, scene on Theramascara uh, way more. I mean, the first time I watched it, I was like, they changed. Uh, you could tell a man designed these costumes. I was Which a man a, did. He did. But I was like, nah. But then, like, watching it again, I mean, Paul and I were, like, in that moment talking about when they had, like, the hammers. Oh, and you see their breaking, stomach muscles. Yeah, so I was like, like ah, yeah, Slow yeah, motion breaking the walls. And then there are these two, like, fucking tanks of women just, like, hold the door so the queen can slide under with the cube. I was just like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I was so into it. No, I, I loved that. I, and I'm also grateful for some of the ass shots that you got. I'm grateful for everything. Yeah. But about one, that. But one thing I got to say and I wrote this I think about 3 times in my notes. I love the relationship between Diana and Bruce. Yes. I I was the most fascinated by that. And I love how like, you know, obviously there's the established relationship from the previous film, but I love like just their chemistry. And oh, I love yeah. that, you know, like when you know when she would go to see him and you know, kind of talk about what they need to do, and then when they would fight, well, and it's this, like there I is just, a hint there that like they like each other, and they like and there's a genuine respect yeah. for each other. And I I've said this since the beginning of the podcast, not like since like the movies or any of that. Since the <laughs> beginning of a po- this podcast, I have loved the relationship with Bruce and Wonder Woman because like in they they did it in the animated series where yeah. you could tell she had a fucking crush on him and he like just couldn't he just didn't know how to handle any of it and like but it makes sense now i buy it makes all the sense because she is the strongest and the most powerful that like i i feel like the our the female of our species can offer so who is she going to like really admire and respect as like a man and be like not someone like superman who just ha- like was from krypton and has all these gifts and stuff yeah she he can they can re- she he can give her a real fight but like bruce having no powers no abilities just sheer like force of, will. force of will and money to make it happen i mean there is something really like hot about that like yeah i mean so, and i think it's 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 you know 
he's a warrior. He is a warrior. And she, and I think she, like, respects that, that, that and he like, was able to. And, they have that moment when she, like, pops his shoulder back into place yeah. because she knows how to handle soldiers. Right. You know? But, but, but also what I, what I like, too, about that scene is that when she walks in, you know, he, he's lifting up a shirt, and you see all of the bruises, and I think she recognizes, you know, he's the only one that's kind of really taking a physical toll out of this. Yeah. You know, and, and I think the fact that he was still doing it. Persever- yeah, exactly. Still persevering. I think that, yeah, that she like respects that because, you know, it's like, you know, like if you think about it, I mean, Bruce Wayne has the most to lose for someone who like, you know, um, because he has no superpowers, you know, and if, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, I just loved I watching like the relationship, are, and, and I love that it wasn't stagnant. They it was are like easily, they were friends, and they fought. Well, and you know me, I love my like fan fiction and shitty shit, shit like that. But I mean, I think that Bruce and 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 Wonder Woman are my are my ultimate like ideal. Like that's the love story I've like I will always want. Yeah, I will always want that because like it just makes the most sense. And I hate, I hate, hate, hate. They're just like well, clearly it's gonna be Superman. It's like fuck you. Yeah, no, you know it's nothing. too obvious. You know nothing it's about women. Obvious. You know, I mean, because it's yeah. always guys saying that. It's always a guy being like, oh no, clearly it has to be Superman. It's like you clearly have no idea. How no. women function and operate. No. Because that is clearly not how it works. I, yeah. Just, we don't look at the biggest. I know that genetically speaking and through, like, evolution, we have been taught as a species that women will always go for the biggest, the strongest. Those, you know, that's, we find those traits in so many other ways. Like, mm-hmm. looks don't mean really much to us like they do to men. And it. There and there is a science behind that, and yeah. so we aren't looking for like the. I mean, in our bestial mode, the biggest, strongest, yes, but as like you know, a person, as a human being now, an intellectual, as an intellectual. No, we look for those other traits. We look for longevity. We look for security and like and and there, so th- having someone like Wonder Woman, you know, who has lived the life that she has lived, and it is very lonely. I mean. We'll see that companionship and another loner that, yeah, you know, it, it just, yeah, there's there's an absolute respect there. and mm. and women, women, we we do love a man we can respect, yeah. I also liked <laughs> that. Um, I love that they fought and 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 they were still just sort of like, I don't know that like that 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 I love that, like it wasn't resolved. At a certain point, you know, when 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 Clark is I'm oh, not sorry, not Clark, uh, when Batman is overlooking the the ship, you know, and, and like you know, I forget what he says, but Diana just says like save it, like she's like she's like still mad at him, yeah. and I just like and he just he's just like yeah, like you know I like I love that. Well, I mean, even you know Jeremy Sassy Alfred caught it in oh, the beginning. He's yeah. just like I'm only interested in your skill set, and he's like yeah, um, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are, dude. yeah. Um, no, I loved Absolutely. it, and I, I and I did also <laughs> like the scene where Batman's like, "Listen, we need to bring back Superman," and you know everyone is just like, mm, mm, "I don't know," and it's like, and you know Batman's not trying to win the popularity contest; like he doesn't care if like any of them think that he's an asshole. Yeah, maybe Diana, but for the most part, he's just he does like, care. He he yeah. cares so much, and yeah, so yeah, to people who like love the whole fucking Wonder Woman Superman thing, like you know nothing, Jon Snow. Yeah, you know nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I just yeah, I just think the CGI in a lot of this just kind of bugs me so oh, much. God, like, like Steppenwolf. Whole, oh Jesus! You look at Thanos, and then you look at Steppenwolf, and Dude, it's like so basically Steppenwolf is Hella. Oh, yeah. He is Hella. And what did Hella have? Like, I mean, uh, when when it came to CG, it was basically her hair that turned into an awesome crown. That was it. Everything else was her. And it's like, oh, God, if if we could have had, like, fucking Hella in this. (laughs) I wish I could cross those universes. You know what I look at, too, though? It's like, you look at Tim Curry in Legend. Uh, I would have taken, like, I think this needed, uh, this needed, like, a real performance. Yeah. And I couldn't help but think of the two of them, I mean, apart from the horns, but, like, remember, like, in Legend, like, Tim Curry would be like, like, you know, Dark Mother, like, embrace me in your arms. Oh, and he, yeah. he kept calling, and he kept speaking to a mother. Yep. And it was like, it was just hard not to, like, think of 
Tim Curry and I just say, like, you know, if they just put some money in prosthetics, like... Steppenwolf, to me, in this felt like a petulant child. I mean, a petulant child is fine, but I just didn't like how he looked. Yeah, he looked like shit. I mean, even the animation in the face, I was like, can he... Like, why can't he emote? That's why I'm thinking, like, you know, it's like, like, we can always see the difference between, like, CGI and real life. And that's fine, but, like... We can also tell good CGI and bad CGI, and it's like I would just much rather have had somebody in makeup emoting, yeah, because I would have been able to to connect to that more. Also, like his purpose, his drive, you know, it's like oh, we're back to Man of Steel where we're trying to terraform again, yeah, you know, like it just I just I didn't care. The aim. Very lame. Very lame. Like, hell, I would have been more on board with Steppenwolf trying to seek approval from Darkseid. Like, if they built yeah. up more on that. Right? Like, if it was, like, about his son trying to earn his father's respect. Oh, my God. I, everybody just, knows that. I need to conquer the world. Yeah, no, everybody knows that. Or, like, in, I mean, yeah, because he's like, this planet was my right. I want to know that story. Right. Why is this planet? Why he truly believes, like, this was owed to me. Right. And you guys fucked it up. Like, I want to know that. And they, yeah. they just they just, they just, just didn't do it. And it, it, it's heartbreaking. I know I shit on DC so fucking much with these films. And we did like this movie a lot more than the last time. Oh, uh, maybe, well, uh, maybe did. I did, yeah. You did. Right. I mean, I, 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 obviously I sat through it again, so clearly that means something. Will, you, I, will I sit through it again? Probably not. But you said, though, what I liked was that, you know, that there were so many things that worked. There were, and it was just overshadowed by Lois Lane, by and, Lois and, and Lois shitty and fucking Clark thing. God. Yeah, oh. um, you know one thing I you know did like too, and just sort of like speaking of like Steppenwolf was I did kind of like the midsection prologue where Gal Gadot talks about you know the last time Steppenwolf was here. I loved that one of them was a Green Lantern, mm. and and that looked. Great, like it when did. when when he really had great. like the the like the hammer, you know, like the big giant green. It, it looked like it was almost as if like they kind of took some notes from Green Lantern the movie. Yeah, because I just like because I remember thinking, how are they going to make Green Lantern look? Because I know they're, they're making another one, but when I saw the footage of the of Green Lantern in this, I was like, oh, maybe they could do it right. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's it's you know I I do, but I do I have a question though for you. Okay. So we made fun of um, Amy Adams a lot in this movie, yeah. and it's not her fault. We love Amy. We Adams. do, um, but that end dialogue—it's oh, so funny. God. No, 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 darkness. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. So that's—I mean—and basically that's what it says. She goes, "Darkness, total darkness, is not the absence of light, but." And you just zone out because you're like, this is garbage. And you stop listening. Well, I tried to listen to the end dialogue. And a lot of it was talking about, you know, how uh, about hope and like how heroes have always been here. Yeah. And and it's it's got the lightest tone in the whole movie is in this end sequence. But I think after the shit show of of what we had seen, we just kind of just tuned it out. Yeah. But I do have a question. I wonder if the whole... And di- that whole ending dialogue was kind of an announcement from DC to the fans that they were going to lighten the fuck up. Maybe. Uh, I think maybe uh, it could be. You know, the entire time I was listening to that, I was just thinking, you know, how hard would it have been for DC to maybe just hire an actual journalist? <laughs> To just, like, write. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, you know, like, I'm sure there's some Pulitzer Prize winning well, person sure. be like, oh, writing an, a fake article for Justice League? That could be kind of cool. Yeah, you know? Like, like, somebody who actually, like, whoever wrote it, whether it's Joss Whedon or anybody, I feel like, you know, because I feel like you can, you can always tell when someone is writing in the vein of journalism, you mm-hmm. know, because it, it's like, I don't know well, why. Because they're telling a story. Telling a story. Yeah, they're telling a fucking story. So, like, why... Yeah, why... I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that was our Justice League Revisited. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you had anything else you wanted to... Well, you know, I was going to say that... Um, 
I liked Danny Elfman's theme. Mm. Um, I liked um, that he brought in bits of the uh, the John Williams Superman he score. Did. He had he brought in some of the. I heard some of the Batman. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. great. Um, I liked that a lot. Yeah, I did too. So um, I thought it was kind of cool that that like we love Danny Elfman. Yeah, and I liked that he was just like, no, I already wrote a Batman theme. Um, <laughs> I did like that. Um, but I was curious to, to hear your thoughts about the whole monument scene. When because when Superman comes back, he's just so like I, that. Actually, is one of my favorite fight sequences in the movie. Yeah, is um, the monument scene, and um, I thought it was fun. And I think that uh, Cyborg and Flash sold it completely. Mm-hmm. Like, Cyborg being like, I don't, you know, because Cyborg pretty much kicks it off because his, right. he's, he, he's scanning us and his body just reacts and he doesn't really have that control yet. And, um, and everybody's just like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, I can't, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, God. So he's fucking, as he's fucking up, he's like, oh, God, oh, God. And then that moment when um, the Flash is running. And that slow pan of uh, just fucking Superman yeah. watching him and the look on his face. Oh, the look on his face. It just sold the whole fight scene. And then you had the good, like, the headbutt from Wonder Woman, which was awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah, when he, like, kind of like, elevates himself and then just, like. Well, and she, because, yeah, because he headbutts her and she's just kind of, like. She felt it. She felt it, but then turned on him and was just like, oh, okay, you think that's a fucking headbutt? And then clocks him. And it's like, damn, you know, yeah. she's so good. Like, so there were there were moments in that that, that were really fun, and, and I, I enjoyed that scene a lot. But he was, like, trying to figure it out and figure out See, what he, the fuck. Well, you know what I liked, too? And then, I mean, Adam showed up, and you were like, ah, yeah, she was the big guns. Um, <laughs> no, but I did, you know what I actually loved? And I, like, I don't know if I loved it the first time I saw it, but I loved it this time. When he sees Batman, he, and he's like, you won't let me live, and you won't let me die. I did think it was oversold, though, when he was like, do you bleed? I was I like, oh, do I? I don't know. I don't know, well, <laughs> I don't, I don't know about that, but I did like the you won't I let me live, that. and you won't let me die. Yeah. And Batman's just like, yeah. <laughs> like. I know. Yeah. But- I think, well, oh, man. yeah, I still think part of the plot of, you know, the previous <laughs> film was preposterous, but, yeah. um, but yeah, I did, I don't know, I, I liked that they acknowledged that. They did, and I, yeah. Um, I just, yeah, I just didn't like, I don't know, I think it's, you know, that's sort of part of reasons why, like, I it was a while about the Hulk when, like, you know, like, when Liv Tyler shows up and she's the only one that can calm him, because then yeah. it's not, because you're reducing the character to, like, a plot point. Well, it's kind of like a King Kong trope. You know, yeah. that you need the beautiful damsel to be like, come, Coco, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I would have liked no, Coco, way Coco. more if it was Ma Kent. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. But we know already from the previous films that he doesn't give a fuck about his right. mother. Because I was, I, I We've was established that it. quite clearly. Like, Bruce I, Wayne cares way more. Sorry, I'm very heated about no, it. No, no, that's, that's okay. Because I was thinking, right, <laughs> if like someone had to calm me down, like if I saw you. You know, obviously, but oh, like you know, there's, there's, you know, there's my light, there's my wife. But when you see your mom, oh, I you know, know what I mean. Like, not to say that you wouldn't have. No, no. I mean, you know, I'm, you know honest, what I'm trying to say. When I'm, if I'm sick. And I'm like feeling like garbage. I love you to pieces, honey. Yeah. I love you to pieces. You can take care of me. You can pay, pay for me. Do everything you need. And I love every minute of it. But if my mom walked through that door, I would be like, mommy. Yeah. <laughs> there's like, just mommy. Yeah. <laughs> like, make it stop. Right. And and, it, and that doesn't matter if <laughs> it doesn't matter how old you are. But also, but it doesn't moms. matter if it's if it's you know paternal or not. Like somebody who was mm-hmm. with you from the get go and raised you and like was there for. All the bumps yeah. and scrapes, I even mean, and if Ma- you couldn't get bumped and scraped. I mean, I feel like that would have so much more. But yeah, he doesn't give a fuck about his mother. Yeah. He clearly doesn't. He never has. And I think, you know, I think it's kind of crazy, too, is how Batman, like, fixes everything. Mm-hmm. Like, he buys the bank that bought the house. You know, he gets, he gets, you know, Barry Allen, the, you know, the foot in the door. Job. Like, yeah. it's almost like, I mean. He's dad. Yeah, he is. He's <laughs> like, it's, he's like Tony Stark in a very different way. He is. And oh, I, yeah. Because Tony Stark will buy all, everything you need and take care of you, but he will not let you forget it. Yeah. But, 
Batman just kind of, you know, mm. like this needs to happen. Right. But yeah, when, when I saw, I remember when I saw that. <laughs> when he like when it's like oh they got the house back and they're moving everything back in and it's like well for what because it's not like fucking ha- like Superman's gonna visit his mom he's not yeah. gonna put a fresh coat of paint on that house yeah fucking Wayne's gonna have to take care of that shit like he I takes know. care of everything it's like God I, I I hate that I hate how in these movies he just does not support his, his fucking mom yeah I hate that yeah. Can you hear that? <laughs> that was my stomach, st- my stomach growling. Um, damn, that was long too. I think I heard like a vowel. You I think know, you're hungry. Yeah. Um, well, that being said, maybe it might be a good time to uh, wrap up. Wrap up. But final thoughts um, about Justice League. I mean, I th- has your grading of it changed? Because you, I think you gave it a pretty hardcore F. I think you gave it like a, a fucking Q. Um, I I don't know. I I think that I, I'm glad I watched it again because I felt like I, I was able to see the actual awesome shit in the movie because there is a lot of awesome shit in the film that I really enjoyed and it totally spoke to me. Um, and I just kind of like had to phase out the real garbage. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm just so tired. I am. <laughs> well, this, this is just exhausting. Well, I'll say this for Justice League. Um, I liked it a lot more, and it kind of has me excited for things to come. Like, I really I really want to see Aquaman. Um, I want to see them do a Flash movie. Um, you know, I, I'm excited for Wonder Woman, you know. Um, I do want to see more of Batfleck. Um, you know, I... If only for more Diana Bruce di- relationship dynamics. Or Sassy Alfred. Sa- well, yeah, Sassy Alfred. You know, I hope that they take a cue from the Teen Titans go to the movies and make an oh Alfred God. movie. I fucking loved that movie. Yeah. I loved that movie. So definitely check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, um, Teen Titans Go was just so much fun. Yeah. Um, probably by far one of my favorite DC movies. Oh, absolutely. Um but yeah, um, but anyway, gang, thanks for listening. You all know the drill. Um, shout, give us some love. Wednesday comic podcast at gmail.com, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, tell us what you think about Justice League. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we right? Are we totally off the mark? Um, you know, yeah, love to hear your thoughts, especially if you have ideas about what DC should do from this point. Well, if you think, yeah, if you think they're they're on it and you like these movies better, tell us, you know. Yeah, I mean, because I, I don't think there's a wrong answer. And there isn't. I, so I would love, you know, if you, if you if you're a hardcore DC film fan, I, I like tell us about it. Like, I want to I want to know what you see. I do. I I, I want to be there. I want to know. Yeah. I want to feel what you feel. Right. Give me some relief. Yeah. <laughs> and as always. Enjoy your issues.